Body language. These rock and roll critics are mostly parents concerned about the impact of the music on their children. Even the decorations themselves tell a story. AFN's Variety Entertainment Program. Good evening and welcome to Prime Time. I'm Ann Mulligan. And I'm Robert Forrest. You're probably wondering, what is Prime Time? This is our pilot show and we hope you enjoy it. We have a half hour package of entertainment and the entertaining. People, places, events, and even issues. Like the issue of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Explicit lyrics. So controversial that a lot of parent groups have fought for warning labels on certain rock albums, and they've won voluntary concessions from most of the recording industry. What would you think about album covers that warn you of the contents? I buy records because I like them. It's personal preference as to what an individual buys or what they listen to. I think it's stupid. I think people ought to listen to what they want to listen to and don't, don't worry about what other people think about it. I think the people should uh, decide individually. They quarrel with the lyrics of much of today's rock and roll, calling the words anything from suggestive to rock porn. Body language. Body language. These rock and roll critics are mostly parents concerned about the impact of the music on their children. Parents who formed groups like the National Music Review Council and the Parents Music Resource Center. They've published a list of what they call rock's filthy 15. Oh, Parent rock critics suggest warning labels on album covers of objectionable records. Performers fear this will lead to censorship. AFN Today radio host Roger Williams talks about the issue. I think it would open, you know, open it up to interpretation because there'd be a very fine line there between censorship and First Amendment rights, freedom, freedom of speech, and you know, freedom to express yourself. And it would be up to different individuals' interpretation as to, yes, that is offensive, no, that is not offensive. We'll be making love the whole night through. APHIS stocks its audiovisual centers with $2 million worth of records each month. Some have made the Filthy 15 list. APHIS told Prime Time it purchases its records based on customer demand. Billboard magazine charts and forecast trends. APHIS makes no attempt to censor records based on lyrics. What remains is the concern of many parents. Some of the lyrics are a little bit too lewd, a little bit, they say too much, <laughs> more than the kids should hear. And perhaps the least often heard voice, that of the teenager caught in the middle. You're making a big deal of it, really. It's a controversial issue, but whatever the outcome, Rock and roll is here to stay. One artist whose songs will probably never appear on the Filthy 15 is Debbie Boone. The daughter of singer Pat Boone, Debbie grew up on a diet of milk and Christian music and rocketed to fame with the hit, You Light Up My Life. And she toured military bases here in Europe last summer and revealed one of her biggest problems, a squeaky clean image. The, the only negative side about it is that, and then my father struggles along with this as I do, is that it's kind of shallow where people think a oh, goody, two shoes, kind of always smiling and not, not real serious, not too bright, kind of uh, an image. And nothing could be further from the truth about either of us. Debbie Boone may be struggling with her public image, but a lot of artists make it without any image at all. We've got a good example for you. You know his music, and now you're going to learn his name. Unless you're Quincy Jones or Paul Simon or Billy Joel, the name Toots Thielemans probably doesn't ring a bell. But the truth is, this 62-year-old Belgian-born musician is one of the most respected harmonica players and whistlers, oddly enough, in the world of jazz. Well, I'm the man behind many scenes from Sesame Street to the Midnight Cowboy, Billy Joel. Not there, I'm not behind. I'm a little bit out front with him lately. But uh, Quincy Jones, uh, you name it, I guess, after 30, close to, f yeah, 35 years in the States, I've played everywhere. The tune blues 
Rosette was written over 20 years ago when Madison Avenue executives decided it would be perfect for use as a jingle. Today, over 100 versions of the song can be heard anywhere from a department store to a television commercial all over the world. I was the, fir the first one to play the theme for Sesame Street. Uh -huh. Did you know that? Well, how old were you 15 years ago? <laughs> One of the more peculiar jobs Toots has undertaken was whistling for a famous television commercial you might remember. Then you see a, a sailor, you know, come by with a, his duffel bag full of goodies and he gets all the girls with the old spice, of course. Benny Goodman first discovered Toots in Belgium in 1951 and brought him to the United States as part of his orchestra. But these days, Toots finds himself at the forefront of pop music. I want to introduce a friend of ours. This is a guy uh, I went over to uh, Paris just to get him on the, this next record. I think he's the uh, best harmonica player in the world, Mr. Toots Thielman. Mr. Toots Thielman, yes. thanks so much for talking to us. Oh, it was a pleasure because I am. Bo I was born in Belgium, but... I am a naturalized citizen for 25 years, and I'm, I must say I'm proud to be an American. to become a star a little bit of talent and a guitar like Debbie Boone or a <laughs> harmonica like Toots Thielman or a football like uh, wait a second and uh, football it looks kind of hard to play not if your name is Herschel Walker he's number 34 for the New Jersey Generals and one of the game's premier running backs since his days in high school, Herschel Walker has gained nearly 18,000 yards carrying a football and has scored more than 150 touchdowns. Now he's a 23-year-old millionaire. Signing autographs for fans at a PX in Frankfurt, Germany now is a far cry from his early days in Wrightsville, Georgia, when he wanted to become a Marine. Herschel Walker says he didn't even like football. Everyone thinks that I'm so, I'm so sports-minded, but I'm not. It's, uh, it's strange, when I was at a lot of banquets, I used to just sit near someone who knew sports so I can ask them what was, you know, who, who was he talking about. So I sort of get myself accustomed to it. And over the last two years, I've gotten to the point where I'm beginning to love football. I'm beginning to learn more and more about it. Before, I was just playing it because I enjoyed it. But now I'm playing it because I, know, I love it. I love it and I, you know, it's a, it's a whole different atmosphere. You told me that you only sleep about four hours a night, so there's a lot of time during your day to do other things. What do you like to do? Well, I write a little poetry. I, uh, I do so much. I love television. I, what in uh, particular? Well, I'm a movie guy. I love uh, things like Sylvester Stallone, Rambo. I love uh, you know karate. I've been in uh, Taekwondo for 10 years. And I love karate, anything dealing with karate. I'm watching it on television. It doesn't matter what time it comes on. I think that's one thing my wife hates is uh, me watching television at 2 and 3 in the morning. Is it important to you to have a wife who does things with you on a daily basis? Yes, it's very important because uh, coming from a small town, you know, there's not that many people there. And going to a large university, you know, I sort of was a loner. I sort of always was by myself. And by meeting my wife, she's... Uh, you know, she's my biggest fan. She's always there cheering me on. But when it comes to meeting the public, Cindy Walker usually ends up on the bench, and she likes it that way. I, I like it better, actually, when nobody pays any attention. I'm not the kind of person that likes to draw attention. You know, I, I kind of just like staying in the background. I'm happy that way. Well, doesn't take much to make some people happy, a Saturday afternoon free and a good game on TV. 
like the Cubs and the Cardinals. Well, that is, if you're a sports fan, and if it's the game you wanted to see, or even the sport you wanted to see, the sports programmers at AFN Television have a tough time juggling everyone's interests. How do you think they're doing? It's okay. It's okay. I have no complaints from me, because I've been here three years, so it's the, I'm, I've been happy with it. I don't watch sports at all. Not really. I'd like to see more gymnastics, more of the indoor sports like that, showing the arts of sports. You know, you need to, you need to show a lot more interesting sports. In My husband's sports. a wrestler. I'd love to see more wrestling. Actually, wrestling is a mixture of, I guess, what you'd have to say, entertainment and sport. There is no, diff no middle ground in professional wrestling. You either like it or you don't like it. And the people who do like it swear by it. Those who don't like it say, well, the heck with it. But professional wrestling has become a tremendous influence when you consider now, too, that NBC will be carrying as part of its network package professional wrestling at least once a month or so. So all of a sudden, if the networks see the advantage to it, then somewhere there must be something more to it than what a lot of people make fun of. AFN is planning to carry professional wrestling starting sometime the end of this year or the beginning of next year. And of course, you have to watch the, our listings to find out exactly when we'll be carrying and what we'll be carrying. Time correspondents take us behind the scenes where actors, singers, and dancers are rehearsing for their Christmas presentations. And you all can look forward to several productions over the next couple weeks. On the 6th, 7th, and 8th, it's Cinderella in the Galston area. That's presented by the Port City Players. The show then moves to Bremerhaven the following weekend, the 13th, 14th, and 15th. The Clay Community Theater Group is presenting two productions for the holiday season. They take place on the 17th, 18th, and 19th. The two shows are Let Nothing Ye Dismay and Scrooge, an adaptation of Charles Dickens' classic A Christmas Carol. Watch posters in the area for more information on all the productions. Words on paper. Ideas in a director's mind. Actors, veterans, children, technicians, singers, and musicians. All mixed in to become Cinderella. The Kaiserslautern Performing Arts Center, December production. This theater may look pretty empty now, but not for long, because this month at Stage 13, they're presenting Charles Dickens' classic, Oliver, a story about an orphan boy named Oliver Twist who travels from Mr. Bumble's grueling workhouse into Fagin's School for Thieves and finally into the longing arms of his grandfather. Don't miss this brilliant, delightful, witty musical this month at Stage 13. Costume fittings begin today for the cast of A Christmas Carol, which will be performed at the Berlin Entertainment Center the 20th, 21st, and 22nd of December, and again on the 27th, 28th, and 29th. The story is a traditional Christmas one based on the novel by Charles Dickens. Curtain time each evening is at 7.30 with Sunday matinees at 3. You know, there's a lot of hard work and creativity that go into those community theater productions, and it's especially difficult when you're trying to recreate a very well-known play. You mean sort of like M.A.S.H., which was recently put on by the Hanau community players. They had to move out of their theater and into a tent. <laughs> As you've guessed, there's quite a bit involved in putting on a show like M.A.S.H., costumes to be sewed, lighting to be adjusted, makeup to be applied, just to name a few. But perhaps the most difficult aspect is the problem the actors themselves face, Father Mulcahy. Because I'm a Brooklyn, New Yorker, a Jewish Brooklyn, New Yorker, and all of a sudden I'm a Catholic priest with an Irish accent, so it's, a, you know, that's, that's been interesting and fun. Listen to me. In MASH, you have to live up to the expectations of an audience that has grown up with the long-running TV series. I think a lot of people were expecting to see more of uh, Loretta Swit in the part I'm, we're doing on, based on the original play in the movie, so I'm more of by-the-book kind of Margaret. And, I, for one. Yeah, they're looking for a girl with long <laughs> blonde hair and all that. Oh, they got short red hair, you know, that fits uh, the Houlihan a little bit better for my Irish. But. Basically, I don't like Alan Alda. <laughs> 
Uh, so that that eases it a lot. Um, however, there's still things you you think about. Gee, what what did he do on this? You guys walked right through the nurses' tent, and we didn't appreciate it. <laughs> Good communication marks the success of a play, and an obstacle to fully communicating a stage production is the distance between audience and action. Director Tom McEvely. And so we built the set out of out of a double maintenance tent and two GP mediums and everything else you can imagine and. Got a bunch of things from PDO, and we put it all together. It's been really crazy. It's been difficult, but I think it's really effective right now. And it gives the audience a chance to really be close to the set. It's a different kind of an evening. They're not sitting in the theater in their, their tuxedos and their ties. They're sitting right in a mash. And you can really feel it. You can smell the mustiness of the tent, and you feel the sand, and everything's right there. It's real. These amateur thespians dedicate a lot of time and talent to the stage production. But when the curtain opens, ready or not, the show must go on. Staying with entertainment, let's take a look at the latest APHIS releases. The movies and home videos you'll be seeing soon. Back to the Future has surpassed Rambo as the highest grossing film of the year. Nearly $40 million at the box office, according to a recent issue of Variety. The Killing Fields, The Breakfast Club, and Desperately Seeking Susan were the most rented video cassettes in the U.S., according to an October issue of Billboard magazine. The soundtrack album for St. Elmo's Fire has been released, and the movie is now making the rounds of the APHIS theater circuit. Can Eddie Murphy sing? Stevie Wonder and Rick James think so. They've just produced Murphy's new album, How Could It Be? A collection of serious pop songs. Beverly Hills Cop has been released on video cassette, and Gremlins is due for release by Christmas. Action-packed adventure films with muscular heroes are nothing new, but there seems to be a lot more of them lately. With Sylvester Stallone blasting through Southeast Asia, Chuck Norris dispatching bad guys with a karate chop, and Clint Eastwood making everyone's day, you might think, as the Tina Turner song goes, we don't need another hero. Ah, but let's not forget Arnold Schwarzenegger. The youngest Mr. Universe still has box office appeal as strong as his biceps. With two episodes of Conan the Barbarian under his belt, not to mention his villainous role in The Terminator, the Austrian-born iron pumper turned actor has just released his latest picture, Commando. And even though his physique is hard as granite, there's a light side to Schwarzenegger that gives his movies a broad audience appeal. What am I going to do? Have lunch. Oh! No European release date has yet been established for Commando. Productions are more beautiful or fascinating than the one Mother Nature puts on this time of year in the Alpine regions of Germany. But there's one very important ceremony that has to take place before the snow falls and the skiers hit the slopes. You have to get the cows off the slopes. And in Berchtesgaden, they do it in style. In Bavaria, during the summer months, these cows are allowed to graze in the Alps. But with winter coming on, all the cows must come down out of the Alps to return to the valley. The event is known as the Alm Abtrieb and is celebrated throughout Bavaria as a festive event. Here in Batchesgarden, though, it is even more colorful with the setting of the Koenigsee. For one herd of cows coming down out of the mountains includes a trip across the lake. A large crowd gathers on Koenigsee shore waiting to see the herd. When the boat reaches shore, the herd's dairy maid or Cinnarin will decorate the herd and then lead them home. If she loses even one member of the herd during the course of the summer, all the others must return to the valley without the ornamentation. The decoration symbolized the joy of a happy end to summer in the Alps, but it also shows how closely the Cinnarin has watched the herd.
even the decorations themselves tell a story. The headpiece is called a furkle, and the most majestic bull is decorated with the most colorful one. Part of the animal's attire is a collar with colorful decorations of metal embroidery or pine wreaths. According to ancient myth, the collar protects the cattle from danger. After each member of the herd is finely decorated, the herd is led through the streets and the crowds to the barns which will be their home for the winter. to clean up after those cows. <laughs> but it reminds me of all those class field trips out to the dairy or, or to the bakery, the fire mm. station back in the mm. school days. Did you ever go to Emperor Constantine's throne room? No, Emperor Constantine's throne room, no. Uh, no. Roman bath? No. <laughs> well, a bunch of Dodge students recently did, and it all started at the train station. Seven thirty a.m. and weary workers begin their regular routine. It's job time again. But for a bunch of young Dodge students, today is different. Normally, these students walk or take a bus to class, but the Deutsche Bundesbahn and its student study field trip program make it possible to take an occasional lesson out on the road. And they go out on a rail to do it. Passenger trains are somewhat hard to find in America, so for some, it's a lesson in itself just to ride in one. By train, you can see it a lot better than by airplane or by car. From the car, you can't get no food. If you're driving in a car, you hardly can't take that many shortcuts. Trains can. A thousand students ages 8 to 18. They are not a quiet group. Well, it's kids, and kids going to be kids. They always know this, so I'll kind of prepare for it because I go almost all the trips with them. So I was kind of prepared for a lot of noise. I wish they would go to sleep, though. <laughs> Students pay roughly half a normal fare to be part of a trip like this, and the object is not to learn about train travel, but about Germany itself. And on this trip, the journey's end is 2,000-year-old Trier. There's history at every corner, and if you're interested in history, you can't go by these things without trying to learn something about them. 2,000 years ago, Romans populated the city of Trier. Today, it's American students. Many of them know Romans only as brutal gladiators. Today's lesson teaches them differently. People came into the bath, and they walked then around this I think they were pretty smart for how old they were, for how long ago it was. I think it's important that kids ought to learn history and stuff. And then they can go home and tell their parents, Mom, Dad, I learned something today. <laughs> they were a lot different from what I'd expected to do. It's a lesson in German history from a time when Germany, like most of the rest of Europe, was dominated by the Roman Empire. Trier, with its Roman baths, its emperor's throne room, and its city symbol, the Black Gate, among other things, is an example of living history. It's been a brief trip. Four hours after it began, it's over. Time not to forget, but to start remembering a most unusual day. For tomorrow begins the regular routine. And with that, we come to the end of our first primetime program. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any suggestions, let us know. Write us at Primetime, Headquarters AFN, APL 09757. I'm Ann Mulligan. I'm Robert Forrest. We leave you on a high note with a visit to a falconry north of Frankfurt in the Taunus Mountains. From our AFN studios in Berlin, good night. Good night. <laughs>